here they come eccentric and victor i really hope that eccentric has a plausible explanation for his involvement you people want to know why you want to know why i helped victor defeat tybalt on the last episode well it's because I'm part of a cause. Tybalt, I understand you want to tear our heads off, but you got to listen up to us just for one second. Eccentric man, you and I, we've had our battles. And through the times that we have tangled, I have learned a lot about you. I have learned that you are a snake. I don't believe a word you're saying and there's nothing that's stopping me from whooping your behind right now, man. Stop, stop, stop. Tybalt, we didn't come out here looking for a fight. Just listen to us for a second. Listen. Tybalt, this hardcore crap, it's gotta stop. I put you through a TV. You jumped off the top of the rafters. We could have killed ourselves in that match. And for what reason? To entertain these rednecks? They don't care about wrestling. It's all about chairs. It's all about tables. We're trying to put an end to that, Tybalt. I am going to be the bigger man. I'm going to apologize. Eccentric is going to apologize. We need to unite, Tybalt. We need to stand up for something. We need to stop all of this. The only thing that I want to stop right now, man, is the two of you from breathing. And since there's two of you in there and only one of me right here, I'm going to bring out an equalizer, man. Tybalt is unable to control his rage running into the ring with a steel chair. And we see Victor and Eccentric walking away like cowards. The two of you are doing what you do best and that's run away like little cowards, man. But listen up, Eccentric. On the next episode, I get my revenge when you and I face off in a hardcore match, man. But on this episode, we're going to treat the people as well because I just heard there's going to be a multi-person hardcore match. There's going to be weapons everywhere and I'm sure you little punks are going to enjoy every second of that. Boogie, woogie, glugly. There's gonna be no escape for Eccentric on the next episode when he takes Tybalt in a hardcore match. Approaching the ring is the team of Prince E. Paul and Earl Lee bringing some class into Victory Road Wrestling. Their opponents, the polar opposites of them, war law. We are talking about two gigantic warriors taking on some blue blood. This is gonna be an interesting clash of styles. We are about to crown the first ever tandem champions. Earlier we crowned the first ever galactic champion Zedder and now we're going to find out whether Prince Paul and Earl Lee can defeat Wolo to become the tandem titles or if Wolo can defeat Prince Paul and Earl Lee I think you get the point as a member of Wolo delivers a body slam follows it up with the second body slam ladies and gentlemen Wolo as you can see they look identical there's no way to tell them apart they use this in their battles to remain anonymous against the ropes standing clothesline by a member of Wolo that could have been done a little bit better but these guys are still a little bit fresh in the ring a pin but Prince Paul is not going to have any of that if we could see the facial expressions of this warrior we would probably see disappointment and he's showing it with his fists as he drives them into the face of Earl Lee. Earl Lee is the much smaller one. 
principle is the bigger one they are very sophisticated they like to eat condiments such as blue cheese and and caviar it's not really my kind of thing yeah but that's what they like there's principal watching this match a double team by warlow warlow of course they don't really like fancy food they eat whatever they can find the first cover of this match only acquiring a one count and you can see a member of warlow just teasing principal principal has had enough you see what warlow is doing here is they're playing a little bit of mind games with principal they're trying to show him that they're in charge a clothesline missed by a member of warlow into a hip toss right outside of the outside right outside of the outside is what i just said a knee to the face of a member of warlow excuse me folks i'm just a bit flustered i was not expecting that principal a guy with so much class showing no mercy at all ladies and gentlemen just because these guys are a bit uh, a bit pretentious doesn't mean they don't know how to get it done in the ring early making a mistake going for the pin out of desperation and the member of warlow was right next to the ropes these two teams are hoping to make history to be the first ever tandem champions to bring some prestige into the titles a nice double team that is what you're going to expect from the victory road wrestling tandem division you're going to see a lot of double team moves principal look at the size of principal if this guy tells you how to drink your cup of tea you're going to drink it right as he goes into a cover just a two count Warlow have this weird ritual where they hit their face before battle. It's it's very it's very intimidating. If I was in the ring and I saw that, I, I would be quite scared. So I guess that's the reason why they do it. There's no real reason to, for me to ask why they do it, which I was, and then I basically answered my own question as principal applies a dragon sleeper. A member of Warlow knocking down principal. I've been looking at Warlord, looking at their physique, looking at their attire, and folks, they are identical. It would not surprise me if they were twins or something. Leaving the battlegrounds of war to come into the battlegrounds of Victor Road Wrestling. Folks, if you make it to Victor Road Wrestling, you are tougher than anybody in the military. I don't care. In the military, they use guns. These guys, they have to use their fists and their legs at DDT. Look at Earl Lee. You see him on the street, you think not much. But look at the way he's manhandling a much bigger member of Warlow. As the blood is all over, he's nice, to, well not anymore for some reason. A splash by Earl Lee. And now he's going for the pin. But a member of Warlow making sure that early does not acquire a victory both these teams are very evenly matched warlaw have a slight advantage because they have more muscle but early and principal they have so much poise they think about everything they do they rarely make mistakes unlike this occasion where early just missed with that splash just as i was telling you about them not making mistakes early proves me wrong and Warlord doing the smart thing, crawling to the tag. We are sold out here in Victory Road Wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. The main event, Faro Farasi will take on Boron Stone for the Victory Road Wrestling Zimbabwean title. I cannot wait for that match. A close line. As well as a hip toss. crowd is on their feet right now filled with excitement against the ropes close line from hell and i could have sworn i saw early's head pop out of his spine principal again getting involved principal must be really frustrated at this point he must really want a tag and that's that ritual that i was talking about hitting his own face 
They even have the same eye color. Wolo getting out of that grapple. Irish whip. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. Did you just see that? A leg drop from the top. And another close line from hell. From the second member of Wolo going for the pin. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. The first ever tandem champions. War Law. And they got those titles using some teamwork. Early making a mistake. And that changed the whole match. We are War Law tandem champions. And nobody is gonna topple us. Ah! Another new team that have signed to Victory Road Wrestling. I'm not sure why they're coming to the ring right now. They're not scheduled for a match until a little bit later on. I guess they couldn't wait. Getting into the face of the fresh champions. Gee, guys, I gotta admit that was pretty impressive. Oh, by the way, my name is Terry. This is my cousin, Perry. You guys better stand over there and watch what we do next. Perry and Terry making a statement to the Victory Road Wrestling Tandem Champions, but they should not overlook this pair. Jacob DJ and Ruben Dynasty. These two have united as a tag team after Jacob DJ gave his number one contendership to Ruben Dynasty. I'm excited to see how these two work together. They've been buddies on the road, hanging out. Jacob DJ feeding Ruben with some kangaroo steaks. Yes, he's from Australia. In case you haven't figured that out already. I don't know where else they eat kangaroos besides Australia. Anyway, I'm just talking about nothing. These two exchanging blows. Folks, this match is going to be much more exciting because these teams are young, they are hungry, and they are a lot lighter. I really hope Warlow is paying close attention to this match as you see Jacob DJ with a beautifully executed moonsault. A running moonsault to be more specific, Jacob DJ with a hurricane runner. Like I told you before, these two teams are going to utilize speed. Look at Jacob DJ getting this crowd involved. Jacob DJ was going for a kangaroo spin and Perry reversing that with a back body drop. Oh, you see how Perry, you see his quick reflexes. Getting out of the way as Ruben was delivering an elbow and, and Ruben Dynasty dropped an elbow on his own partner. Just a little bit of a tidbit on Perry and Terry. Apparently Perry has an addiction to pornography and Terry is there to mentor him to help him cope with this addiction. And here comes Terry. Terry is the one who wears a singlet. He's the more serious of the team. As I told you, helping Perry with his pornographic addiction. Terry is a lot more technical in that ring. Terry is not as flashy, not as fancy as his cousin Perry. These two are cousins helping each other out. Perry is trying to give Terry some, some personality as Terry is trying to show him that there's more to life than watching pornography all day. A pin by Perry onto Jacob DJ. Excuse me, I mean a pin by Terry. Warlow watching this match in great anticipation. Look at that. Driving Jacob DJ's head right into the canvas. Jacob DJ is going to need a few pills for that headache. Here's Perry, as I was saying, the much more exciting of the team, but also the younger. He makes a lot of silly mistakes, and that's why it's good to have Terry by his side. Perry on the top rope, waiting for Jacob DJ. Oh my goodness, a reversal by, by Jacob DJ. I don't even know what, what Perry had in store there. But Jacob DJ scouted it very well, delivering that sitting power bomb, and this will give him the opportunity to go for a tag. But look at Terry, very intelligent, cutting Jacob DJ off, ensuring that a tag will not occur. 